Hi there folks, uh, today I'm working on the uh, rear hub on my Morris Minor van. I decided to redo the brakes. I got new drums and shoes. And when I got the right hand side taken apart here, I found that it was uh, contaminated with ear oil. Oh, excuse me. Actual hypoid from the differential. And so I started pulling it apart. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, it's a floating axle. The uh, hub stays on the differential when you pull the axle out. Pretty nice arrangement, really. But then I went to pull this hub off of the axle uh, using various tools I had around and uh, I got it this far so it's out flush with the uh, threaded end of the axle tube which I'll show you later when I get the hub actually off of here but um, I didn't want to risk damaging the threads doing uh, heroic stuff to try and pull it off of there so I uh, remembered that on my Sprite, my Austin Healy Sprite, that I had made a strap metal, uh, a metal, a strap out of a piece of metal that went across the studs and let me pull this thing out. So um, I've been seeing that piece of metal floating around my shop ever since then. But when I went to look for it to do this project, it was nowhere to be found. So I had to make one all over again, and that's where I am right now. Um, I have made it. It's a simple tool, and you'll see it here in a minute. But uh, I'm going to attempt now to pull this thing apart using that tool and a slide hammer. Here's the tool in place. As you can see, it's just a metal strap that I um, uh, am using with a slide hammer. It came with a kit for uh, pulling studs for body work. Um, but what's sticking up in the axle tube here is actually the head that pulls on the studs when you uh, contact weld them onto sheet metal. So th this could either be real easy or real hard. It, it So far it's moved pretty easily. So. I'm hoping that just a couple of wax with this thing will take this thing off. Let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, well, it was pretty easy. <laughs> that was a lot of trouble. To <laughs> anyway, um, you see your seal surface here. Let's see if we can focus in on that. Um, and then you have the threaded axle you want to be very very careful with these threads because uh, if you damage them i guess you buy a new axle or you have some serious machine work done to uh, recreate threads on the end of this tube so just use a lot of caution uh, when you're working on this thread this is the nut right down here that goes on that and it's locked in place by a washer and Moss Motors sold me a kit that includes the necessary gaskets o-ring uh, bearing and a new lock washer so um, I can go ahead at this point and clean things up a little bit and then proceed to put the new components together. I'm going to have to do some scrubbing on this hub because it's uh, pretty well soaked in grease. Here things are broken down a little further. I've got the um, bearing out of the hub and as you can see the seal is down inside the hub here with the lip facing in because it's keeping the grease in the actual hub here. 
Um, this will clean up nicely and uh, some other components out of here. There's the cam adjuster for the brakes. The old brake shoes which are I'm sorry, I'm leaning on my elbow here. The old brake shoes are uh, filmed with grease. They're um, they're definitely contaminated. Uh, got new shoes from Moss and new brake drums. I'm gonna powder coat the brake drums. Uh, I don't want old rusty drums showing through my uh, Minotaur wheels here so uh, I'm gonna I actually have uh, Austin engine colored green paint that I'm gonna uh, uh, do the brake drums in I thought it might be a nice contrast to the uh, very dark green uh, Jaguar color here I've got the um, flange cleaned up on the axle here. Uh, cleaned up pretty well. There's no damage to it or anything. And I've got the hub cleaned up and ready to take the bearing. I've got the seal installed in place in there. Uh, you can't see much anything from this side, but it's in there. And I'm getting ready to drop the bearing in there. I say drop it in. I assume it's just a loose press fit. Let me give it a try. The bearing kit comes with a packet of Exxon Mobil long life bearing grease. Nice pretty blue stuff that I've packed in there. So now I'm ready to uh, put this back on the axle stub and torque it down. The bearing just kind of falls into the hub. It's a um, loose press fit. But the inner race going over the axle stub here is a tighter fit and you need some kind of a tool to push it in there. I found this inch and five sixteenth socket did the job very nicely. Just put it over the end of the axle and tapped it into place. It uh, big enough that it doesn't uh, hit the threads or anything. So now I've got the bearing in place. Turns nice and smoothly. And uh, it's time to uh, put the nut on with the retaining washer, the lock washer. The retaining washer has a tab on it. it goes into this hole that you see on the back of the axle. You can see it coming through from this side too. Here are the washers in place. Uh, the tab is ensconced in its hole in the side here. Very difficult to see. Oh, there we go. Um, so now the next step is to put the uh, lock nut in place. This axle nut is an inch and seven eighths. And I bought this oversized socket set from Harbor Freight. And I bought it from them because it's one of those tools that you're going to use two or three times in a lifetime. It It's a one inch drive socket, but it comes with three quarter inch drive adapter. And I have this bodacious blue point three quarter inch uh, air gun uh, that an impact gun that I'm going to use on it. Um, 
The big mystery is how much torque actually goes on this thing. Um, it came off fairly easily with the impact gun. I think my sprite manual said it was 150 foot-pounds. Uh, I'm going to give it a couple of taps with this big gun and consider that to be enough. I don't want to risk damaging the threads on the or the nut or anything else on the end of this axle. There was also some sealant on the flange. But uh, I'm going back uh, with just the O-ring. Here's the brakes all assembled. I uh, got these retaining springs in place in the top and bottom shoe. They can be very difficult to put in. Whoever designed that was a mean guy. Got your spring coming through from the inside of the brake. Both there and here. This is the spring with the two small coils at each end. And then you've got your adjuster down here that you adjust through a hole in the brake drum. So nice new shoes, nice new bearing, nice new O-ring. Everything should be good to go. Here's the uh, left side, passenger side. Um, brake drum back on uh, powder coated in olive drab as a kind of counterpoint to the uh, Jaguar green here it's kind of hard to see you see my messy garage more than anything else but uh, I think it's gonna look nice they're very very tight on there it's gonna take some bedding in to uh, get them to turn freely New shoes, new uh, brake drums.